Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's lesson. Today we are going to be doing quadratic formula and the discriminant. So where I want everybody to go, we need to go backwards. We're going back to 2.2 more solving. Um, and before we only did the new parent function stuff, so you should have the first six of these already completed. Uh, we are going to jump down and on your paper, it should say somewhere right about here, it should say quadratic formula. So we are going to start by solving these using that quadratic formula. Um, and for those who maybe don't know the quadratic formula, we write that as an x equals uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Uh, so hopefully you've seen this before. This shouldn't be brand new. You will have to memorize this formula, so make sure you're prepared to do so. Uh, some people look up videos that have like rhyming, so some people do it to like pop goes a weasel, so they say quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Sorry about my singing voice, uh, but that's what it is, and so that's what we're going to focus on. However, in order to focus on something like that, in order to use the quadratic formula, it has to be in standard form. It has to be in standard form, and that standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, or the equals 0 could be on the other side. Uh, but basically, a is going to be the number in front of your x squared term, b is the number in front of your x term, and c is your constant. So for this first one, again, we should always be equal to 0. So we'd subtract 3 from both sides, and we'd get x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Uh, from there, we're going to identify a, b, and c. So because there is not a number out front of x squared, we would call that like 1 x squared, right? So that means that a is going to be 1. So a equals 1, b is the number in front of x, so b equals 4, and c is that constant, so c is negative 3. So once we do that, then we can just plug in all the numbers into this nice pretty formula. So we can say x equals negative b, so negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so we'll do 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 3. Oh. So that should be our numerator. And then we do want to make sure the entire thing, so not just what's under the radical, but the entire thing is over 2 times a, which is 1. Then from there, we can start simplifying. So we'll keep the negative 4. We should know that 4 squared is 16. And then this is multiplication. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times negative 3 is actually going to end up being a positive 12. And that's all over 2. So then we can combine what's under the radical. So we'd have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 28. It'll be all over 2. Now we would have to simplify that radical 28 because we want to get this in its most simplest form. So whether you want to do the birthday cake method or whether you want to do just simplifying the radical, uh, if you want to do the birthday cake method, 28 is divisible by 2, which would give us 14. That's divisible by 2, which would give us 7. That's divisible by 7, which would give us 1. So 2 is a couple, so 2 should come out, and 7 is a single, so 7 should stay home. If you have another method for simplifying radicals, you are welcome to use it. So it would be negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root 7, all over 2. Um, and then we should note that every single one of these is divisible by 2, so we can go ahead and divide them, right? So negative 4 divided by 2 is going to give us negative 2, and 2 divided by 2 would just give us 1. So our actual answer is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. So if we did do parent function for that, we would get the same answer. This is just a different way to solve it. And again, we're simplifying that by dividing both of these pieces by 2. So I can do the same thing. The next one is set equal to 0. So a is 1, b is 10, c is 22. And I'll go ahead and plug that in. So negative b, so negative 10, 
plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 10 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 22. And that's all going to be over 2 times a, which is 1. So that would be our setup, and then we start simplifying. So we'll keep that negative 10. 10 squared is going to be 100. And then negative 4 times 1 times a positive 22 is going to be a negative 88. And it's all over 2. So we have x equals negative 10 plus or minus the square root. 100 minus 88 is going to give us 12. And then we do have to simplify that radical. So you can use the birthday cake method and it would still work. Or if you're good at identifying your perfect squares, you can also say 12 splits into 4 and 3. The square root of 4 is 2. And 3 doesn't have a perfect square root. So that would be 2 radical 3. So that's two methods for simplifying radicals. Um, if I would go ahead and practice simplifying if you haven't already. Again, both of these numbers are divisible by this 2, so we can go ahead and simplify that. So negative 10 divided by this 2 is going to be negative 5. And 2 divided by this 2 is going to be 1. So it would just be negative 5 plus or minus. You can write 1 radical 3, or you can just write radical 3. And so that would be our answer. So I'm going to do two more. So the next ones are in different forms. So we want to get it in that standard form before we go ahead and do them. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute this 4x out. So that will give me 4x squared plus 4x equals 7. And then I do need to subtract 7 from both sides. So that will give me 4x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals 0. And then we can go ahead and identify a, b, and c. So a in this case is 4 b is going to be 4, and c is going to be negative 7. And we'll plug it in. So we'll say x equals negative b, so negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is negative 7, all over 2 times a, which in this case is 4. So that would be our setup. Sorry, you can see the lead roll across my page. And then we'll start simplifying. So we'll keep that negative 4 there. It'll be plus or minus the square root. 4 squared is going to give us 16. Um, and then we have kind of this gross multiplication. So 4 times 4 will give us 16. And then we would do that times a net. Well, we would do negative 4 times 4. That's a negative 16. And then we multiply that by a negative 7. Um, so, or you can also do 4 times negative 7 and then multiply that by 4. Both are vi uh, viable options. Whew, good God, words. So 4 times 4 times 7, uh, but we have two negatives there, so that's actually going to be 1 12. So you could say that's negative 16 times 7, or you could say um, that is negative 28 times 4, negative 4. But be careful with your negatives there. So we should get that, and then we'll keep simplifying. So we'll say negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 128 all over 2. Again, two methods for simplifying 128. I'll do the birthday cake for this one and the other method for the next one. So 128 is divisible by 2. That gives us 64. That's divisible by 2 which gives us 32, that's divisible by 2, which gives us 16, that's divisible by 2, which gives us 8, 2, 4, 2, 2, 2, and 1. So then we're looking for couples. So we have a couple here, a couple here, and a couple here. So we do, for this one, it would become 2 times 2 times 2 on the outside. And then we have a singular 2 left over, so that would stay underneath the radical. So this would be 8 radical 2. Okay, so this is simplifying. Why did I put 2 here? So this is simplifying to negative 4 plus or minus 8 square root 2 divided by 8.
Now there are a couple of different ways you could do this. You could write it as negative 1 half plus or minus the square root of 2. Or all of these are divisible by 4. So to simplify it, we're just going to divide all those by 4. So negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. 8 divided by 4 is going to be 2. So we'd say 2 radical 2. And the entire thing is going to be over 2 because 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we're just simplifying that fraction down um, by getting kind of those numbers to cancel. So before we could divide by that denominator nicely. The problem here is that 4 doesn't divide nicely by 8. Uh, so instead we're going to divide by kind of the greatest common factor between those, which would be 4, in order to simplify it down to something a little more manageable. Okay, and we'll do our last one. So again, like the previous one, we have to get it in standard form before we can identify a, b, and c. So we'll do x times 2x, which is 2x squared, x times negative 3, which is negative 3x, and that's equal to 9. We'll subtract 9 from both sides. So that will give us 2x squared minus 3x minus 9 equals 0. So a is 2, b is negative 3, and c is negative 9. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll plug it in. So we'll say x equals, this time we're doing negative b, right? So we do, technically speaking, negative, negative 3 when we plug that in. So it'll actually turn out to be a positive 3 eventually. So plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times negative 9, which is c. We're not a room a little bit, but it's all going to be over 2 times a, which is 2. And I really have lead going all over the place here. So again, that negative b, so that negative negative 3 will turn to a positive 3. Negative 3 squared is a positive 9. And then negative 4 times 2 is going to be a negative 8. And then times negative 9 is going to be a positive 72. And it'll all be over 4. Okay, So we keep simplifying. We say 3 plus or minus the square root of this will turn out to be 81 all over 4. So one thing we should note is the square root of 81 is actually a perfect square. So that's actually going to end up being plus or minus 9 over 4. So when we get numbers that are all nice and pretty, then we're going to go ahead and simplify. So 3 plus 9 divided by 4. That's going to be 12 over 4, which is 3. And then we would also do 3 minus 9 over 4, which is going to be negative 6 over 4, which is a negative 3 halves. So our two answers here are actually 3 and negative 3 halves. Oops, sorry. So again, that's what that plus or minus means. So we have one adding 9 and one subtracting 9. And so because that 9 is a nice pretty number without a radical on it, that's why I'm allowed to kind of go ahead and do that and get some prettier numbers out rather than ones that contain radicals. So basically, once you get your equation in standard form, you just plug it into that quadratic formula, and you should be able to get an answer from there. OK, I'm going to jump to the next page. And we're also going to talk about the discriminant. So what the discriminant is, is let's say I write the quadratic formula again. So I say negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. OK, if this is the quadratic formula, this piece right here, this b squared minus 4ac, this is the discriminant. Discriminant. So again, it's just b squared minus 4ac. Okay, And the reason that is so important is because it tells us how many solutions we'll have. So if the discriminant is greater than 0, so if it's a positive number, um, that means that it is going to be two real solutions. If it's equal to 0, then it's just going to be one real solution. And if it is less than 0, that means it's going to be two imaginary solutions. OK, 
Okay, so this helps us because it can kind of tell us how many answers we should be getting without solving the entire problem. So it can save us a little bit of time so we know kind of where we're going and what we should expect to get out. So like the quadratic formula, I don't know why it says using best method, we should be doing the discriminant here. So I'm gonna kind of erase that. I think your directions should say use the discriminant. Um, so in order to use the discriminant, Again, it has to be equal to zero, so we are gonna add four x to both sides for this first one, and we'll subtract 15. Okay, so we'll get three x squared plus four x minus 15 equals zero. So then we'll identify a, which is three, b, which is four, and c, which is negative 15. So previously we would plug this in and we wanna solve it. Now we're just looking to identify the number and type of solutions. I believe that's the terminology that I used. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but we're looking for the number and the type of solution. So we're gonna go ahead and just plug it into that discriminant. So we'll say b squared, so four squared minus four times a, which is three, times c, which is negative 15. So four squared is 16. And then we do four times three, or negative four times three, which is negative 12. And we'll multiply that by a negative 15 to get plus 180. So we're getting 196. So that number is greater than zero. So therefore, this is going to have two real solutions. Okay, because that number is bigger than zero. So, I'm gonna practice, I'm gonna go down to, um, I'm gonna go, well, I'll do number 12. So again, we'll move three over. And so we'll say x squared plus four x minus three equals zero. So we're identifying a, which is one, b, which is four, and c, which is negative three. So again, we're doing b squared minus four ac. So we'd say four squared minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is negative three. Okay, so that would be 16 plus 12. Again, that's gonna give us 18 and that is bigger than zero. So again, this one would have two real solutions. Okay, I'm gonna skip 13 just cause I don't wanna have to distribute that out right now and I'm gonna jump to 14. So here it's already set equal to zero. A is one, B is negative eight, and C is 16. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug those in. So we'd say b squared, so negative eight squared, minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is 16. So negative eight squared is a positive 64. Negative four times one is a negative four, times 16 is a negative 64. So we should get zero out. And so what that zero means is that we're going to have uh, two, or I'm sorry, not two, one real solution because this is equal to zero, so we're going back up here, that is one real solution. Okay. Let's see, which one do I wanna do? Um, I think I'm gonna jump to 16. Let's see. Maybe not. I'm trying to see. I want to give us one of each type. But I'm not sure if I can. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna jump to 17, but I'm actually gonna change this minus five to a plus five real quick. So if you guys could go ahead and change that minus five to a plus five, and we're gonna do it like that. So we'd say a is one, 
B is 2, and C is 5. So we go ahead and we plug this in, so B squared, so 4 squared minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 5. So 4 squared is 16. Four time, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, times 5 is going to be minus 20. So this would be negative 4. So because this is less than 0, we would have two imaginary solutions. So again, these are our only three options here, two real, one real, or two imaginary. You will never have one imaginary solution. Um, sometimes people write two imaginary solutions as also saying uh, no real solutions. So those are kind of interchangeable. But I want you to kind of specify two imaginary. Tell me the number and the type. Um, so I kind of changed these directions, probably even from what's on your page. So if you want to write what we actually did, which was state the number and type of solution to the quadratic formula. Or I'm sorry, to the quadratic equation. So that's what we actually did. I kind of changed the directions just for the sake of time because we already did the um, quadratic formula problem, so I don't want to go through and solve each and every one of them. But that's what we're doing. State the number of solutions and the type. So we, that's what I mean, number being one, two, one or two, and then real or imaginary. And so those are our three cases, and as long as you know those, you should be good. And as long as you know what the discriminant is, you should be good. One other nice thing about doing this first, and I'll kind of show it with number 12, is that once you find the discriminant, which is 18, because it is this portion of the quadratic formula, uh, we can just say, okay, negative b, so negative 4 plus or minus. Well, we already found what's underneath that radical. We already found that it's 18. And then we're just dividing by 2 times a. So solving for the discriminant first can sometimes make it a little quicker to plug back in because, again, you know how many solutions you should be getting. You should be getting two real ones. Uh, and now you can just plug it in real quick and solve it. So it would be negative 4, just for the sake of time, 18 splits into 9 and 2. The square root of 9 is going to be 3, and it would be 3 radical 2 all over 2. So this would be the answer. You don't have to solve for the discriminant first. Sometimes I like to just to know how many solutions I'm getting. And this is too real because we have that plus or minus. That's what's making it two solutions. And we can see also why this is the case again with number 14. So let's say we wanted to go ahead and plug it back into that quadratic formula. Um, we'd say negative b, so negative, negative 8, plus or minus Again, what's underneath the radical, that is the discriminant. And we found that the discriminant is 0 all over 2 times a, 2 times 1. Okay, So negative, negative a, that 8, that's going to be 8. Plus or minus the square root of 0, that's just going to be 0. So that's really going to go away, divided by 2. So really our answer for that one is 4. And again, that is one real number. This is 2 because of the plus or minus, but this one, the plus or minus, went away because that is just 0. So we just got one real solution. Um, so if I ask you to state the number in type, you don't have to go ahead and actually solve these all the way out. Uh, but if I ask you to solve it, you do have to continue on. I just wanted to show you how we're getting, if we did want to continue on, how that would be one real solution or two real solutions. So that is the lesson. Um, I am going to post some kind of homework. I don't know if I'm going to give you the next couple of problems or if I'm going to give you a separate sheet of paper. So just make sure you check on Google Classroom for the correct homework assignment. Y'all have a great day.